Now that we've used the Refine Edge tool to create this nice, soft, matte edge that takes into account the fine filaments of her hair, let's improve the resulting matte a little bit. I'm going to press the tilde key to go back to my normal display, but I'm going to go up to 100% to make sure I can see fine details. I'm also going to switch to viewing the alpha channel because that is perhaps an easier way to see exactly what's going on in these fine details. Now the new combined rotor brush and refine edge effect has several master toggle switches to turn things off and on. For example, you can turn off the refine edge portion of this effect in one fell swoop. Now we have just our normal binary rotor brush mat, and here we have our beautiful refined mat that takes into account our hair. You can also turn off groups of parameters, the rotor brush refinements and the refine edge refinements, which we haven't done anything with yet. In the next movie, I'm going to talk about how some of these names have changed for the rotor brush refinements, but for now, let's keep focusing on refine edge. The first refine edge parameter is actually base refine edge radius. This allows you to set a base width for refine edge that goes all the way around your rotor brush propagation boundary without you having to manually draw a stroke. This would be particularly handy if you have someone in, say, a furry coat, footage that was shot blurry or out of focus, something where there is going to be some degree of semi-transparency all around the edge of your object, and you don't want to have to be bothered painting a refine edge stroke around that entire edge. This will come in even more handy when you use the related refine soft matte effect to adjust the transparency created by other techniques such as key light, and I'll show that a couple movies later. But when you're doing normal rotor brush work, and you're using the refine edge tool, quite often you'll just leave this to zero and then just carefully draw the edge where you want it. Now let's go look at these other fine tuned parameters. Smooth, feather, contrast, shift edge, and chatter reduction. Feather and smooth are two different ways of removing detail in this edge. Normally you'd like to have a lot of detail, but if you have particularly noisy video or other artifacts, you might need to get rid of some of that noise. Feather is akin to blurring the resulting alpha channel. Then I'm going to increase my feather parameter. And as I do so, you'll see some of the details of the fine strands of the hair start to disappear. We still have this detail down in the shoulder areas outside of the refine edge effect. This is the hard rotor brush mat. Normally I would keep feather close to zero unless I know that I have an issue with something that's out of focus along the edges and I'm getting a lot of noise contaminating and really grunging up those edges. An alternative to feather is smooth. Rather than just blur things, it attempts to clump together areas of transparency or semi-transparency. As I increase smooth to some large value, you'll see I get a very different effect. Something looks more like a reduced noise or reduced detail than a Gaussian blur. Again, if you have a problem with noisy footage, creating little pinpricks and holes along the edges of your mat, Smooth is an alternate way to fill those in. But my two favorite parameters are contrast and shift edge. A problem I've had with my earlier explorations of the Refine Edge tool is partial transparencies in the gaps between hair, then background, then hair again. And I'm going to zoom in to 200% to show this area in a bit more detail. Now, right through here, I would actually expect the alpha channel to be transparent so I can see through the gap between this outside strand of hair and the body of her hair. However, the Refine Edge tool is looking at this as partial transparency. There may be some wispy hairs back there. There may be some confusion between the background color and the color spill onto her hair. To improve this gap, you could try making a very small brush then holding Option or Alt and trying to paint out these transparent areas. But Quite often the result is you grab a hair by accident and you fill it in instead of getting a hole. And I've had unsatisfactory results trying to get too detailed with the Refine Edge tool. So instead, I'm going to go to the contrast parameter and boost the contrast to make that area between the strand of her hair and the bulk of her hair more transparent. Now in doing so, you notice that her hair unfortunately has thinned out as well and no longer has quite the heft to it that it previously had in the alpha channel. Well, that's where shift edge comes in handy. It takes the areas that are opaque and bulks them back up again. So I can go ahead and have some nice solidity where her hairs actually are in this scene. And here's where the fine tune switch comes in handy. 
This was before and after, a much better defined edge. And if I look at this in context, over a background, this is my final composite where I can actually see the strand of her hair, or if I turned it off, there's a bit of haziness into this area, and it makes it harder to see through the background to see what's going on. You see particularly over here on the left side where she is against this wooden beam. By default, I'm getting this hazy sort of alpha channel through this area, but with my contrast and shift edge refinements, now I'm getting some details back in her hair. Chatter reduction is something that used to be very important for rotor brush when it was on its own. It basically said if an edge is not moving, but you see it moving, it's chattering, and therefore you want to reduce that amount of chatter. Well, with hair, quite often, you will have fine hairs moving every single frame. So quite often, you don't need chatter reduction. However, if you do have an edge that's supposed to be completely the same from frame to frame, and you see it's moving a little bit, try the different chatter reduction settings. Then finally, Rotobrush has this normal use motion blur and decontaminate edge color, which comes in very handy. You see how her hair now looks much more realistic than it did with it off. Still need to do some touch up on the shoulder, but I'll do that with a separate color spill plugin. 